Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. Every single week we talk about digital hospitality, and that is our ongoing thesis that every business needs to be digital first. Every business needs to be in the hospitality business. And in order to do that, everything we talk about goes back to the smartphone and it goes back to storytelling. Uh, we love to interview people that are playing the game within the game. So we all know that digital is so important to offline businesses, traditional restaurants, traditional bars, whatever your business is. If your business was traditionally an offline business, now you need to be online. You need to be creating content. However, there is people that are playing the game within the game. They not only have recognized that Google is important, that Amazon is important, that Twitter is important, that TikTok is important, that Clubhouse is important. They're actually doing. So one of the things I love about this podcast is I get to listen to, to people that are experts, but I also get to interact with people that are listening to the show. So you listening to the show, you are part of our community. You are part of a rising tide. What we like to say is people that listen to this podcast, my grandfather taught me early on three things stay curious, get involved and ask for help. If you're sitting here listening to this podcast, if you're driving to your restaurant, if you're driving to the place that you work at, if you work in sales, if you work in marketing, you're curious. I mean, that's why you're listening to this podcast. Somebody recommended it to you. So we're grateful to have you. The next step is to get involved. So we need to bring guests on that are going to actually inspire you, not motivate, because motivates temporary. Inspiration lasts forever. Inspiration is a change that will actually drive you when you wake up in the morning to go, I have to do this. I am compelled to do this. There's nothing more important that I do. That's what changes. And then finally is to ask for help. I'm here. I know our guest is here. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to welcome at Chef Jensen Cummings. He is the host of the At Best Served podcast. He is a badass. I met him on Clubhouse which is a new hot social media, basically live podcasting platform. If you guys are not on Clubhouse, please get on Clubhouse. Um, please reach out to me. I can send you an invite. Um, and Chef Jensen, welcome to the show. Honored to be here, Sean. Hey, uh, so let's give our listeners your story. I like to uh, go to my mentor, my business mentor, uh, David Meltzer. He taught us taught me how to do a two minute drill pitch. So I want to know who's the jockey and who's the horse of uh, Chef Jensen Cummings. Two okay. minutes, you got it in you? Yeah, absolutely. So my story, like so many stories like yours, start well before I was born. I'm the fifth consecutive generation of chef restaurant tour in our family. We opened our first restaurant in 1900 in the Little Falls, Minnesota called La Fond House. And then San Francisco, great grandfather, grandfather, barman, restaurant tours. I have three uncles who own restaurants all across the country, and even my younger brother, also a chef. And so, you know, kind of, it's in our DNA a little bit. We're gluttons for punishment, and uh, and have a vision that is well before us and lives beyond us. So I really focus on that. I uh, started my career at 17, just a punk kid, you know, barely graduated high school, and then found my people. The the heat of the kitchen, the intensity of it, the fact that I could be great at something because I never quite fit in anywhere else uh, was important. Then the trajectory led me to, you know, the, the James Beard award winning places, the chef driven places, uh, you know, had my name in lights a few different times, lived that life uh, for better or worse. That was, that was my life. And, and then uh, transitioning now into focusing on media and storytelling and, inspiring future generations as I have two young sons and had to look them in the eyes and say, would I want them to be the sixth generation? And a few years ago, the answer was fuck no. Yep. And so I said, I had to either walk away or triple down. And that's where best served was born an opportunity to amplify the worth and work of people who feed their community. And that's my journey now. I love it. Um, you know, you and I have been on your podcast, best serve podcast. You've invited me on to clubhouse panels talking about mental health. We're going to talk about mental health today. Um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart as uh, as a recovering alcoholic and somebody that's in a program of recovery. And I've been sober and working on my sobriety and working on myself, being a better dad, being a better husband, being a better leader, being a better podcaster. But it's sharing that story. You know, I was 
recommended a podcast by Toby, who um, who I who joined our digital hospitality team, uh, Mountain Road Creative. He's an incredible strategist, and he recommended this podcast to Stover, my producer, and I. And the podcast was Jason Pfeiffer, um, who is the chief editor in chief of uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, as well as um, uh, I believe it was I forgot the other name. I'll put the link in the in in the show notes, but. Anyways, he went on this podcast explaining the hero's journey and the hero's journey as it relates to business media and pitching your business, you know, more specifically, what is story and why is story compelling? Well, what we like to do with story is we always like to say there was a problem and then I solved the problem. And then all of a sudden I solved the problem and I'm the hero. Like that's always the pitch. So he'll get these pitches from people that want to be an entrepreneur magazine saying, I have this business, I have this tech company, I have this product, I have this service. Right. Hey, I solved all this problem. And here now I'm successful now write about me. But what he said is, you know, the more that he started thinking about it, the more he realized like the most compelling part, it's the shit in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the A or the B, it's the, it's the gray area. It's not black or white. It's, we all relate to the pain. And where was the pain? You know, you talked about the pain and the struggle of living this chef life. And now you've made a platform, you've created a platform to talk about all these issues that restaurant owners face with mental health, with addiction, with how we treat our staff. Why, what compelled you to get back to the middle of the story? Well, that hero's journey is pretty compelling. It's funny how how kind of our different lives intersect. I grew up in a very uh, California family like you in the sense that we didn't fill out college football brackets. We filled out Oscar brackets, right? We always had, <laughs> always had some friend of the family that was in a, a play. Like I remember going to the Lion King or Aladdin because our friends were in those you know Broadway shows or we knew somebody who was nominated for, you know, sound production in, a, in an Oscar nominated movie or something really? like that. But I remember I've that. never heard of on. Oscar brackets. I'm a bracket, oh, yeah. I'm a bracket guy. I was big on it. I won like three years in a row when I was uh, really? in my early tweens because I was all about that life. Okay. I thought I was going to go to UCLA film school. So I've always been a creator. I've always been a storyteller. What I recognize now is that I have been a pure communicator and storyteller. I just happened to use food, beverage, and hospitality for 20 years as the medium for which to communicate. And that has allowed me the opportunity to shift the narrative, my personal narrative, my past history narrative, and reconstructing what worked and didn't work. And that's why Best Served was important, because I needed to acknowledge my past failures, my, my personal culpability, and a lot of the issues that are at hand today that we see playing out. And also to find that center, the core, that sense of belonging that permeates so much of us finding our people and be able to separate those two, acknowledge them both and find ways forward. And so that's what happened. And so we call them, you know, unsung hospitality heroes. So many people that have touched my life, my career, that have been impacted by me positively and negatively need to be acknowledged. And so that was the journey was how can we use story? How can we connect that story to our, our personal journey, our professional journey, our industry at large, and start to understand the game within the game within the game that we're actually playing, which is very different. And so, you know, I throw things out there that even me as a chef, I don't like that I have to say it or that yeah. I say it. many of my contemporaries don't either, but the food doesn't matter. Yeah. It does not matter. The drinks don't matter even steps of service and you talk about pure hospitality and true hospitality steps of service sometimes get you know commingled with that none of those things actually matter correct the food is just the proof that you are who you say you are and it's all about communicating who we are as individuals as teams as businesses as an industry and so that has been the focus and will be the focus and i truly believe that it's not the culmination of this industry is not becoming an owner of your own business, right? That's the proof that you are who you say you are. Yes. When you find your, your people, that's it. Like that is the moment. And the more that we focus on that moment and allow others to continuously feel that moment, even when your head's getting kicked in and you're getting ground up and you're having mental health issues and you're having financial issues and you're having physical issues, that's where the actual opportunity are, is. And we need to shift that narrative we need to start recognizing that we are in the relationship business. We need to build relationships internally and externally to have any chance. 
the product is just the vehicle for that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, I'm a huge fan of your podcast and the way that you've brought people in from different industries to talk about mental health. And, you know, you talk about the pirates, which is something that, you know, Anthony Bourdain typically, um, you know, famously and infamously has talked about. And that's the thing that compels us to the hospitality business is that we aren't nine to five people. We, we do things differently. Um, Can you, can you explain more about this pirate mentality and finding your tribe, but then also recognizing that just because that's the way that it was, does that mean that that's the way that it needs to be moving forward? Yeah, there's this there's this self-deprecating cycle that we get ourselves into, right? It galvanizes us. And, and this is a theme you'll see with me throughout. And so if people find one piece of content out of context, they're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Because I recognize <laughs> that you're always, you're always the the opposite sides of the same coin. Correct. Right? The contradiction that is the human experience is something that I'm trying to be more and more open with. I'm an alcoholic so, bar owner. <laughs> exactly. I'm that, a living, right? I'm a we, living contradiction. We're so cliche. It's ridiculous. And mm-hmm. so recognizing that, you know, I was that pirate on the pirate ship, the, it was the band of rebels, the Island of misfit toys, and all those things are true. Yet that was so, there was so much more to me. And that's why when we talk about amplifying the worth and work of people who feed their communities, right? People who feed their communities is broad sweeping, not just people who are cooking the food, sure. right? The farmer who's growing it. It's the teacher who's also the school garden leader at an at elementary school in Tampa, Florida. And it's the line cook in Kansas City. And it's the delivery driver from U.S. Foods. It's the, the whole ecosystem. The entire it's ecosystem. It's just about acknowledging right. that people matter. That people matter. And so, you know, when you're looking at finding your tribe, I think the fact that we've kind of made restaurants monolithic is one of the vulnerabilities we see playing out. We expect that people know your journey because you're in restaurants, you're in food and beverage. And there are many things like mental health and substance abuse and issues that clearly all of us have experienced. Yet the nuance of the individual and the nuance of you, your business, your brand are what people are screaming to hear more of. And so that's what we're really trying to highlight. That's why my shift and the focus on the worth side is so important because we devalue ourselves. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. human nature in and of itself. And we put up this facade, right, of this tough guy, tough gal mentality. And unfortunately, parts of the business actually perpetuate that and feed that monster, right? Leave your shit at the door. Put a smile on. It's part of your uniform, right? Oh, we wear these badges of honor. Like me, when I talk about is that I did not take a sick day for almost a seven year period in the heart of my career. How and many, I how many I was, times did you clopen? Oh, I mean, 17 right? hour days. Like, yeah. it was, like it was my job, right? Correct. And there's a couple things. Clo- that play clopen, out clopen is closing and then opening the next close, day. For those, for open. those of you that don't know, it's yeah. working, it's working a 12 to 16 hour shift and then closing the restaurant and then going out and partying all night and then coming back and opening it the next day. Oh, and then not even coming back, waking up in your car in the parking structure behind the restaurant to just go back and do it all over again. Yeah. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And I have been so guilty of that so many times kind of throughout that career. And so, you know, seven years, not taking six days. And look, I was sick as a dog plenty of times throwing up at a trash can on the line right? Either because I was actually sick or because I made myself sick through trying to, you know, again, feed that monster. And so the reality of that life is something that we glorify. And look, like going through struggle, don't get that twisted with abuse, both self-inflicted or inflicted from the structure of a hierarchy of the business or any of those elements. There is a difference. And we, we conflate those right? We, we don't understand that they are different and you can and will struggle. And the beauty is in the middle of that her- hero's journey when they fall yes. flat on their face and they pick themselves back up again and yeah. recognizing when and where and how that happens for you, that that doesn't need to be something that you perpetuate onto yourself or allow to be perpetuated onto yourself time and time again to prove something to yourself that you are of value and worth that's the human dynamic that's playing out. And so I find myself a lot more now 
I don't talk about food at all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't at all because all I want to do is talk about food. Yet I recognize that I spent all of my time talking about food and it's, it's hollow if there's nothing to back it up. And that's what we're trying to build is that, that human infrastructure that we don't invest in, in restaurants enough. We call them bodies. We call them hands. Like we are not even whole enough to be contributing more than the weight of our labor of taking up space. And that's what we need to reconcile and reflect on. I think that's, uh, I mean, it, it's inspirational for me to see another person in the same space, in the media space, restaurant space, to have the conversation. Because if you don't have the conversation, then you don't realize that it's important. You don't realize that it's okay. And you don't do the hard work. Because a lot of people, they look at it and they go, oh, well, that's great. You're acknowledging it's mental health month. And of course, you're creating content around mental health. Like, what have you done about it? Like, this is a big problem. You know, it's a big problem and it's a big problem when you have attitudes like that, that are looking at it in that way. And nobody wants to get vulnerable. No one wants to get to that heart of the hero's journey, which the more like listening to Jason Fiverr, who's one of my favorite content creators, but he talks about the most compelling leaders, these industry icons, these people, they all have dark secrets. They all have dark pasts. And those are the things that people connect to. And those are the things that we all on a human element understand that person has anxiety. That person has depression. That person thinks that they're not good enough yet. You know, they're a billionaire. How, how is that possible? And how many people that are successful are actually really struggling inside? You mentioned Anthony Bourdain. If you ask yeah. anybody, millions of people that work in the restaurant industry, what would be your dream job be, right? People that are lifers in it. Uh, Anthony Bourdain's job basically is 90% of people's answer. I would love to travel yeah. around the world and try new foods and meet new people and have new adventures. And he struggled to the point where he couldn't do it anymore because of that worth, because of the depression, because of the point that that we glaze over so much of the human experience because we focus on the food, the beverage, those elements, because again, there's strength and weakness in it. So many of us have felt just humanity, feel out of control, feel like we don't have an impact or, or control over our own lives, let alone the greater good, right? And that can be deafening for us it's all we hear in our heads all the time and when you find food and you can be brilliant and beautiful in those moments and be able to overcome there's such a such a strength in that yet it becomes just like the drugs that so many of us imbibe it becomes mm -hmm. you need that to feel that you have self-worth versus having self-worth and being able to deploy that towards that team dynamic that effort and putting out a great experience for people putting out a great product and so it's just so many of these things are so closely related that it's it's fucking hard to see the forest through the trees and that's just yeah. what i'm trying to do is just illuminate the fact that there is difference there is nuance there is subtlety there is bullshit in our game and we need to recognize that and even for myself you know i tell myself all the time and yet I still protect myself. I'm still yep. deflecting with, with humor or talking fast and, and having some clever catchphrase. It's hard, even for somebody who's committed to being honest, open and vulnerable <laughs> and yeah. trying to express my desire for, you know, camaraderie and leadership and all that. I still struggle with it. So like, yeah. it's not it's not like you decide one day that you're going to be something different that is the hero's journey. Like that's the point where we're at. Our industry is falling flat on its face right now. It has been exposed. It is thought it was hot shit. We went from being outcasts to being the cool kids. We didn't quite know how to handle that. Going from being the help to the cool kid in the room, everyone wanted to talk to the chef, but it went to our heads. I know it did for me. And then we went to being the establishment, right? You die a hero or live long enough to become the villain that plays out in my mind all the time. We are the establishment now. Yeah. You have to recognize what do we do with this opportunity and this responsibility today that's going to manifest the outcome for my two kids, for your two kids, 
for millions of people that we will never meet. And that's the work that we have to do today. We have to pick ourselves back up and we can't get into that drama triangle of blame, blame, blame. And it's kids these days and it's unemployment and it's people don't pay enough for food. Those could be, may be true in these microcosms. Yet if you zoom out and you look at the big picture, this is something that we built. It's been built for a couple generations now. And it's time for us to realize we fell flat on our face, right? We got cocky, we got beat. And now it's time to lift ourselves back up and build something new and actually accomplish that transformational success, right? The hero's journey, there's always transformation. Yep. The hero brings the fire back to his people, yep. to her people. And that's the point where we have to get to. But we're at the fall flat on your face part of that every movie that you've ever seen part of that journey right so that's that's where we're at that's what we got to do that's the responsibility you know, as as you were talking i started thinking um i've become close friends with barry schuster who's the uh, editor and publisher for uh, restaurant startup and growth magazine and i'm fortunate to um work with stover our producer and we produce monthly columns but he he asked me um a couple months ago about a problem that he was seeing in the industry he was getting a lot of feedback from independent restaurant owners about drug use that drug use had somehow gotten worse than it had ever been and he was asking how do i deal with it how do i deal with it in our restaurant and it, it forced me to go back and think about you know the progression of 13 years of running a restaurant you know, being an alcoholic bar owner, knowing that, how did I run the restaurant in the beginning? And then how do we run it now? And I think, you know, one of the most powerful things for me was sharing with him that in the beginning, it was a badge of honor to do what, you know, we would call safety meetings. It was a joke. Like, yeah. let's have a safety meeting at the bar with me and Corey, my, you know, my best friend that I opened the restaurant with Eric, my general manager and our bartenders, that safety meeting was taking Jaeger shots, you know, yeah. like, what kind of example am I setting for the rest of my staff if it's okay? What kind of example am I setting for the rest of my customers if it's okay that the owner's there drinking? And I said, you know, my own personal struggle, my own personal struggle in my restaurant allowed me to understand, first of all, we're not going to tell our, our staff whether they can drink or they can't drink or they can be sober or not sober, whether they can smoke weed, not smoke weed. All we can do is create an environment where it's, they feel safe. If they feel vulnerable, they need to be able to be openly tell us, Hey, I don't feel good today. Is there, you know, can I go home? Yes, you can go home. But also just to acknowledge that this is a problem, not just in our industry. This is like a, a, a global issue that we're all dealing with. Why are we going to these substance abuse issues? Tell me, tell me a little bit more about the conversations that you've been having on uh, best serve podcast around substance abuse. You know, what you're talking about is psychological safety. It's something I've been learning a lot about, didn't quite understand, you know, and if you have that, you have an opportunity for people to invest more of themselves. And so a lot of the conversations I have always come down to mindset. So many people, most people, and I think in our industry, it plays out systemically as an issue is we are in a scarcity mindset. We're in survival mode. We're in fight or flight. And to get to that growth abundance mindset it's really fucking hard yep. it is really really hard it's the only opportunity and so if we continue to treat people as if they're commodities within our business that's meant to produce net profits and products that have market value we're not recognizing the business that we're actually in and so we end up talking about the mindset elements a lot because things like there's so many practical things that play into somebody's mental health, right? Their own biology, their own history. Uh, yet there's also things that the business has the potential and the responsibility, I believe, to be able to nurture those safe spaces that, that are full of psychological safety. And you know, talking about living wage, talking about, about health benefits, talking about mental health benefit support, talking about that level of training is something that needs to be brought up. Yet it's scary because we're talking about dealing with our feelings. And even though we are in a relationship business, we don't like talking about our feelings. We'd so, much rather project that onto the food and allow the guest to get all of that nurturing. And we leave it all out on the field and leave nothing for ourselves. We are completely depleted, right? 
And so you recognize that that's what's actually happening. Then you have to figure out how to communicate in a way that people are going to actually listen and pay attention. Correct. And so one of the things that I focus on is what are the strengths that we have? What are the things that we're really, really good at as again, individuals, teams, businesses, and an industry that we can, that we can reframe, redirect, and deploy towards things that we historically suck at? And mental health support is one of those things. So even shifting language has been something that I've been really, really cognizant of. I'm talking about mental health mise en place. Like, how do we set our station? Something that we do pretty good in restaurants. How yeah. do we build it into pre-shift? How do we have the vendor list on the wall and then right next to it, the crisis hotlines? So you need to get some fish, here's who you call. You need to get some mental health support, here's who you call. And make it so matter of fact in the way that we rock day-to-day -day business that it isn't scary, that it isn't this big elephant in the room. And you're like, how the hell do I even take the first bite? You Correct. start by doing the things that you're good at and deploy it against things that you were not. So just shifting that paradigm is one of the first steps. And that's been my job because I bring in a lot of thinkers. My superpower is actually just being unbelievably comfortable being the dumbest person in the room. Yep. And the strength that I have is getting really, really talented, smart, thoughtful, caring people into the room, sparking conversation, and then recognizing by asking a lot of questions, I'm the annoying kid in the front row. Why, 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 why all the time? <laughs> you're, the, you're, the, you're, the, them, you're, you're my grand, you're my grandfather's greatest grandchild. A hundred percent. I never met your grandfather and I love your grandfather <laughs> because of exactly that. And especially that he instilled it in you a generation later, right? Two generations. So, yeah. so important. So uh, that's, that's the focus point. And then my ability is to recognize good answers. And that's very nuanced because an answer for me is different than an answer for you, which is different than an answer for your grandfather, right? Sure. Which is different than an answer for your 21 year old line cook. And allowing that process to happen is what I am really focused on. And it allows mental health conversations to happen because I end up just being a translator once those that stuff's coming out. And I spent a, a lot of time saying, it's kind of like this. And they go, oh, I live that life. I know that. I've been there. I'm trying to get there, right? And that allows them the opportunity to say, oh, that's not that different than, than what I'm already doing, what I already believe, the ethos that has already been instilled in me, the things that I believe in to my core, who I am. And if we can connect those dots, there's a chance. I love that. I love the mental health mise en place. That's, uh, you know, a great way to, to frame the conversation and putting that vendor list next to the, the crisis list and knowing that it's okay. Um, you know, that, yeah. that's why this stuff is important. And that's why, I mean, I, I, I applaud the work that you're doing. Um, can you, can you tell me a little bit more about clubhouse and why it's powerful? We wouldn't be having this conversation. I don't know. We probably would. I think, you know, playing we the game, within, play, we sure. would have found each other, but you Clubhouse, know, I was actually Clubhouse thinking accelerated. how we Club connected and it wasn't Clubhouse first. It was actually our, our buddy, Jason Hospitality Game Changers Facebook group. Oh, right? that's right. That's and, right. That's correct. Yes. Yep. And so Jason he Copel. was on, on our show. Uh, Josh Copel. Josh Copel. Yep. Yep. Uh, sorry. Did I say Jason? I'm sorry. Yeah, jo Josh Copel. I'm sorry, Joshua Copel. My bad. <laughs> he's yeah. fine. He's got tough skin. He's he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's a restaurant guy. He's, he's a mover and a skin. shaker for sure. <laughs> uh, and and so, Hospitality Game Changers was this Facebook group that that he started, and a couple other people have been like really active in. And that's the first place I saw you post a couple things, and then saw how active you were. And we're very simpatico when it comes to using this thing right here as a communication that smartphone tool, that he's holding up yeah right the smartphone you got to think about that tool and so i started seeing that so then got onto clubhouse clubhouse is kind of a an interesting space because it's a little less heavy than being on a visual medium right yes. you can just be on your phone wherever i've heard people that are on the subway talking on on some heavy topic and you can just drop in you can listen in on a conversation. 
you can host a conversation, you can be a part of a panel conversation, you can raise your hand to jump up on the stage, so to speak, to be able to put in your two cents and contribute to the dialogue that's happening in a multitude of arenas. So we've been pretty active there because we've, we're just always looking for ways to democratize who gets to be a part of the conversation, right? Those unsung hospitality heroes, so many of the people that are part of our discussions have never been on Clubhouse, first of all, and have never been invited to be a part of their own narrative because they, yeah. for some reason, have not been anointed by the media or the powers that be, and they don't have that self-worth to say, you know what? My fucking voice matters. My experience matters. It's shared by so many people, and I should be able to have a space where I can speak my truth. And so we did that with Best Served, where anybody, you go to bestservedpodcast.com, it takes you directly to our blog platform, Best Served Read, where you can read stories from, from cheese makers in Chicago, uh, line cooks in New Hampshire, servers in Denver, uh, coaches in Arizona that all are navigating their own lives, their own journey, their own joy and pain, their own hero's journey. And that matters to me yep. because I don't want just the voice of the 347 people that have been deemed worthy to speak on behalf of millions of people that are part of our ecosystem. That's what, one of the things that I felt like clubhouse, anybody can get up on that stage. And I've seen that, you know, in our celebrity obsessed culture, seeing, you know, people on stage with Elon Musk because they raised their hand and got to go up there and speak on that and never had to leave the comfort of their own home that matters, like that changes who has access to be able to be a part of the dialogue. It is not just the anointed and privileged who get to be a part of that. Anybody can, you do have to have a smartphone. So I know that is restrictive to some degree, yet it is leveling the playing field. And that's something I heavily believe in. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's super powerful for me. And it's something that I think is part of my long tail journey is getting people access. I mean, right now it's yes. trying to wake up the people that do have access to say, stop fucking bitching about notifications on your phone and start unlocking all the potential that you have on your phone. Yeah. Literally, like we, we have all this anxiety of seeing, you know, why isn't my business growing? Why don't people care about my products? Why don't they care about my services? But exactly what you said, it's like, you, you're curious, like, however, you're getting compelled, whether you're on Instagram, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're watching legacy TV, and you're watching a show, like, you see things, and you're compelled by them, you see a magazine, these are all of our interests. Well, I want to be in that mag, what if my business was in that magazine? What if my charity was in that magazine? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't we be able to raise the amount of money so that we can cure whatever disease we're trying to cure? Well, how are you doing that? You can literally do it with this smartphone. Like literally you can go on to clubhouse and you can find the topics that you care about and start having the conversation. You can start talking about the pain point in your journey and you can connect with somebody like you said, Elon Musk or whoever it is in that clubhouse room and you can build a connection. I mean, literally all those gatekeepers that used to exist, you know, I've got a picture of Manhattan behind me before old school business, before the internet, before the smartphone, you would have this entire structure, this hierarchical structure of how do I get to talk to somebody on the you know, 37th floor of that building? Right. You know, that's the CEO. I'll go on LinkedIn and I'll find them immediately and I can send them a DM. I'll go on Twitter if they have a verified Twitter account. Like, and anybody that's playing these games within the game, you start to understand, oh my God, I don't need to send that cold templated email anymore. I can actually go and start adding value on these spaces and then somebody can hear who I am and what I'm doing and maybe I can get to my next goal. Well, and that, that feeds into something you and I both believe. Every individual, every business has the opportunity and now again, I think responsibility to be their own media company. Yes. You have a voice, you have a platform and you have an opportunity now for distribution and access to your point that I think a lot of us are still sleeping on. And why? Because we don't think that we're worth listening to. We don't think that somebody's gonna care about what we have to say. We are 
we are anxious or we're depressed with the fact that we don't know what to do to reconcile our own dreams, our own aspirations, our own fears, and put that out there. Yet the people, those leaders that are the most vulnerable are the people that are willing to speak their truth. It doesn't matter that you are Elon Musk or that you're in the 37th floor of that high rise building. Now people want you because you are them. Yep. And that's what people are looking for more and more. And so, right, you know, one of the people that, that we follow, Gary V, talks about that, you know, be the mayor of your town. And, and I know you're talking always about cultivating your village. I think that's really, really important to recognize. You don't need 100,000 views and to go viral for your message to have an impact. Correct. Right. We, we hear these things. Like I talk about these like empty words, the fakeness, the facade that we throw out. And job posts is something you and I just talked about and something that I'm just so hell bent on changing the stories we're telling, right? And we talk about, you know, hiring line cooks, 14 to $16 an hour based on experience, apply here, like fucking sign me up. That yeah. is inspired work there. Yeah. Yet we keep doing that because we're transactional in that nature. And I think the opportunity that you have is to shift those narratives. If you want to be a part of an upscale fine dining, high volume rest neighborhood restaurant. What the hell does that mean? But you yep. talk about the body of, you talk about where you're living, who the people that are part of your actual community, your actual neighborhood are. So just be the, be the communicator, the herald of that neighborhood, the actual neighborhood. Correct. And tell me a story. You want to be a part of a neighborhood restaurant that's been in this neighborhood for 13 years that has been here investing in the people. And now we have second generations of people working at our restaurant. That's who we are. That's what we believe in. We want you to be a part of this legacy of this journey. Well, that's a whole fucking different story that you're telling about your quote unquote neighborhood restaurant, because right. now it's actually of a neighborhood not just some empty words you're using to try and transactionally sell to a customer or try and sell to an employee. And it shifts your relationship on both sides of that equation. Yeah. And the most powerful thing is once you start learning how to share your story, the, the bottom line is people are already doing that. <laughs> and that's like the craziest thing for me. It's like, literally you've already had to sell your story yep. to open up your restaurant. You just did it in real life and you didn't do it digitally. So you need to turn the camera on and you need to start doing it digitally because then you realize you're not the only restaurant that's in a village. Like literally you're speaking on behalf of every single person that owns a poke shop or someone that owns an acai shop or somebody that works as a line cook or somebody that works in, you know, as a dishwasher. Look at all these restaurants right behind me in Manhattan that they all rely on this industry that we're talking about. You become a voice for them. Because those struggles, you know, we talk about one of the, you know, the greatest that we call greatest movies of the restaurant business is waiting, you know, and what does waiting address? It addresses all these things that we propped up as, yes, it's hilarious to haze the line cook and to have sexual harassment. Like none of that stuff is okay, but like, it's a popular medium that's allowing the story and the conversation to happen. So how can we create that story in these micro, micro little platforms, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on YouTube, how do we have a conversation? And the most important thing that you said was you don't need hundred thousand views. It's an audience of one. All you need is one. Talk to yourself, talk to who you were five years ago and tell your story, just document it the same way you would in a journal, because the more powerful thing is like, as more people get access all over the world. The internet, we're building on the backs of giants. People can find this information based off of key results, based off of search results, based off of what they care. And they can go, well, I just listened to this person, you know, in Guadalajara, Mexico, that was talking about why they got into the food business and how they're trying to impact mental health because it's an issue in this village. Like that's a powerful story globally. Yeah. And it's, it's evergreen also, yes. right. That'll live on forever, potentially. And so you don't know when Sean P. Walshef and Jensen Cummings are going to get together because they saw each other again and again and said, you know what, it's about time that, that we connect, you know, and I want to, I want to make sure and bring a couple practical things to your audience, because I know how important it is to Perfect. be able to figure out a couple first steps. We've talked about a lot of heavy things 
And, and I think one of the things when you're talking about being this digital brand, because I think it shifts people towards what we call tell your best story. You actually have to be committed to being a storyteller, right? Is imagine, imagine that you put out content that only 47 people like, three comments. And because of the vanity metrics that have been pushed onto us, that would seem like an abject failure. Yet to me, the fact that you put it out there is a roaring success. Correct. And recognizing that is important. What else happens is one of those 37, 47, 112, four people that actually engaged with what you did has the opportunity to have a massive impact on your business because they come and work for you and become a general manager that helps you open three more locations, right? Because they are uh, on the PTA and they're planning the events for their school that could be $27,000 in revenue for your restaurant. So just because it doesn't perform, quote unquote, the way you think it should, does not mean it cannot have the impact that you need it to have because you're focusing on that story. And imagine the currency that you now have as a communicator to communicate more locally and globally about what you believe and who you are. Because unfortunately, with this smartphone here, we've become very transactional. Here's our special night. Buy my shit. Here's, Here's my call to action. Today. What's your Buy call to shit. action? Yeah. What's your ROI? Hey. These dirty words. You know, <laughs> These dirty I, digital marketing term. words. Yeah, but that. that's what they are. Unfortunately, we're not long-term thinkers in, yep. in, in so many ways. And there's a strength there because we are such tacticians. We're counterpunchers. We live in the moment, which allows us to adapt to that moment and make sure that individual guests or that individual de- dish has exactly what it needs. Yet sometimes we don't think long-term. And so we're not investing in the success of our business three months from now, nine months from now, two years from now. And that one post two years from now could attract the person that changes your whole trajectory. And so be that herald for your community. Be the person that puts out this. This is what I, I would, this is the call to action for your, for your audience, because I know so many of them are owner operators. Every week for the next two months, put out a weekly top five places for carry out and delivery and a top five places for patio dining. Let's just say those two things. And you pick what your top five is. And you include four restaurants that are in your community, that are part of your village, because you know them, maybe they're across town or they're right next door to you. Be the one that has the strength to recommend another business, because what's going to happen is that business over time is going to have trust and confidence in you that you're in co-opetition, not just pure competition, that there are not finite resources that you can build up followings. That means there's plenty and abundance for both of you. And the other thing that's going to happen is you're going to have the attention. People are going to pay attention to what you say, like, where do I go? What, what do I need to try? And all of a sudden you're doing what the media used to do in these listicles that are clearly effective. And they're looking to you because they trust that you are an expert in your space and that you have the care and thought to curate something meaningful for them. And you're being selfless in that moment. People are going to pay attention so that when you say we do have a new menu coming out, they care. Yes. And that's what we have to do. We have to get people to care. And that comes through honest, open, vulnerable communication in any way, shape, or form you do it. If it's internally to your, to your team, if it's potential employees, if it's potential c- customers, or if it's your current guests, they all need to know that you care and they all need to know who you are. And you need to set that precedent, that tone. Nobody else is going to do it for you. You cannot blame anybody for the inequity of being able to do that. That's it. So anybody that's listening to this podcast, it's not about the motivation to do it once. It's not about the motive. It's about the inspiration to know that you're curious. Now you need to get involved. You literally need to get involved And the way that we get involved is by failing, by creating content, jumping off the cliff, by doing that, because you're investing in the skill set. You're investing in the skill set that over time, 
you will look back and realize that this storytelling that you've been doing already in real life, all you're learning is how to do it and amplify it on all these different platforms using audio, video, written word and images. That's all you're doing. And then you do it on a daily basis. And that daily basis, all of a sudden you'll look back and you'll go, now I'm part of this rising tide. Now I'm part of this game within the game. Now look at all these opportunities that are coming to me because I was willing to be vulnerable. I was willing to tell that middle part of the story, not just, you know, hey, I'm, I want to do this, not just, hey, I'm successful, but all the shit in the middle, all the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Start sharing those things as a leader and you'll see the results that I know um, Chef Jensen has seen. And uh, I, I applaud you for what you're doing. I'm grateful to be part of uh, part of the tribe. I know that there's a lot of things that we're going to be doing in the future. Give uh, give our audience the best place for them to uh, find you and continue to interact with you. Yes. Well, I just posted on our TikTok, so definitely get on TikTok at Besser Podcast and at Chef Jensen Cummings, inspired by you when we spoke on our show. And it is me starting one of the first shows recording with with one of those like call center headsets. <laughs> I saw it. It's a phenomenal video with hoodies hung around me <laughs> outside of my gym. To have a phone call with one of our unsung hospitality heroes for 15 minutes just to learn about them because they were recommended to be on the show by one of our like mainline guests. And so go on a TikTok because it was nothing fancy. And now 400 shows later and hundreds of thousands of views and opportunities to be on Digital Hospitality Podcast were created because I just said, I have to start. And I just did it all through my phone on Zoom and Anchor. So definitely go to TikTok. It is, it is absolutely the future for hospitality in very practical ways, like the hiring process. Uh, besserpodcast.com so you can read some of those amazingly inspired stories from people who've never been invited to be a part of that narrative. Absolutely. And then very active on uh, Facebook, Best Surf Podcast, where you can see our, uh, our shows, live shows, and uh, the video cast of what we do, and uh, Instagram at Best Surf Podcast as well. I appreciate that. And uh, anybody, if you're listening to this podcast, you, you care about people. I mean, we, we care about hospitality. We talk about it. It's, it's in the title of our show. Um, but one of the most powerful things that hopefully you got from this episode is that if you, if you truly want to help more people, if that's what your purpose is, is to help more people, in order to be selfless, you have to be selfish. In order to be selfless, you have to be selfish. You Nobody else is going to do it. You, the person listening to this podcast, you have to stop listening to the podcast. You have to turn on the video. You have to make the video. You've got to create the profile. You've got to just start posting. And then finally, do you have to ask for help? I know Chef Jensen will take anybody's call. He will spend time, let you know what he did to start his podcast, what he does on TikTok, how he uses Instagram. All of these different tools, they're all open and available. What we do on LinkedIn, what we do on Clubhouse, all of these things are, they're free. Um, that's, that's the most amazing thing. They're free, but it takes an investment in yourself. So make that investment in yourself. Um, follow at Chef Jensen Cummings. Download uh, Best Surf Podcast. And um, as always, you guys can reach out to me at Sean P. Walchef on all of these social channels. Uh, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that's a part of this rising tide. Thank you guys for listening to the show. We will catch you next episode.